Greetings, protagonists. It is I, Paradox. Thanks to new support by Konami, I am now able to make the Moific deck of my wildest dreams. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Okay, sorry folks, I had to get that out of the way. Um, so, hi, this is Vincent. I had to do it. Um, Malefics. This has been my baby since they first came out way back when. Um, I love this deck to death. It's been sitting on a shelf, sleeved up, untouched for the longest time. But... Konami has finally given us the support that we need to be competent, not competitive, not rogue, just competent. Um, so I've been working on this build for a while. If, for those who don't know what Malefics are, they are a archetype of uh, different versions of iconic monsters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! training card game um, that special summon themselves for free by banishing their equivalent extra deck monsters. And they're just big beat sticks. Uh, their biggest problem was that they could only be... Uh, you can only have one Malefic on the board at any time. So you would just summon one, beat over your opponent, and use some back row floodgates to control the game in your favor. Uh, obviously that doesn't cut it anymore, but Konami circumvented that with some new support. So we're going to go over exactly what that is. So first things first, the mandatory cards. Three copies of Malefic Cyber End Dragon. Uh, just to reiterate, you special summon this card from your hand uh, by banishing a Malefic uh, a Cyber End Dragon from your extra deck. And uh, the Malefics also have another crippling um, shared weakness for, for the most part, that there must be a field spell on the field or else they are destroyed. Uh, so that's why you need to hard bring out your Malefic world uh, field spell to keep them on board in order to swing over your opponent. So, um, you know, the big restriction of having one Malefic monster at a time and could only attack with that one monster, you know, it really is crippling, but... Uh, we'll get to other reasons why you are able to play this deck. Uh, on top of the Malefic Cyber End is three copies of Malefic Stardust. Uh, this was the best card of the Malefic deck. It was used on its own for tech. Uh, basically, it's the same summoning condition. You banish Stardust Dragon from your extra deck to special summon it. Uh, a field spell has to be present in order for it to stay on the field. And the difference is, instead of just being a beat stick on its own, uh, it has a protection effect where your field spells cannot be destroyed by card effects. So, uh, really good card. It was used in a lot of Gravekeeper decks to keep Necro Valley alive, but, uh, you know, it's mandatory that you run three. And now we get on to some of the new stuff. Uh, Malefic uh, Paradigm Dragon. This card is pretty interesting. So, Konami was smart and decided not to slap the only Malefic monster on the field clause on this card. Um, instead, you special summon this card by banishing a... Uh, Synchro Malefic Dragon, which in this case we only have one. It's Paradox Dragon. Um, so you special summon it, but you can't special summon it if there's another um, Malefic uh, Paradigm Dragon on the field. So this is really important because you can still special summon this one from your hand if you have the level 1 or level 2 Malefic Monster, which we'll get to shortly, um, because most of the other Malefic Monsters can't do that. They have to You have to get rid of the other monsters before you can special summon them. Uh, so on top of just being a 4,000 beat stick, similar to Cyber End Dragon, uh, it also has a effect where you can send any Malefic card from deck to graveyard to um, add a Malefic card from your deck, uh, I'm sorry, to return a Banished Synchro Monster level 8 from your Banished Pile. So you return it back to the extra deck and then it special summons it out, ignoring the summoning conditions. So... Pair up this with Malefic Stardust Dragon. You special summon Malefic Stardust Dragon. The Stardust Dragon is now in the banished pile. You special summon Paradigm Dragon. And then that brings back out the Malef the Stardust Dragon from the banished pile. So gives you more bodies on board. Gives you a little bit of protection as well. Because you can use the Stardust Effect to negate a uh, card on Field Pop. Um, so this is just a really key staple with the new support. Uh, we want... Run the one copy of uh, Malefic Blue Eyes White Dragon and a copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Um, this is a different summoning condition than some of the other main deck monsters. Uh, this requires you to ba uh, banish the counterpart from deck or hand. Uh, so it does mean you run a brick, but you don't want Stardust to be the only level 8 in your deck. You kind of want to have at least one more. And having different names comes in handy with uh, cards like Malefic Tune. Uh, not Malefic Tune, Malefic Selector. So it's kind of important to have some extra names so you can get bodies on board. And 3k beat stick is never something to, you know, be unhappy about. 
Uh, finally, we play the one copy of Malefic Truth Dragon. Uh, this card is fantastic. It does have a lot of restrictions like the other Malefic, so it needs to be a field spell on the board. But its summoning condition is if a Malefic monster is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can pay half your life points to special summon this from your graveyard or hand. Uh, this is very important because if your opponent you know, pops some of your monsters or kills them by battle, you have a plan B. It's great discard fodder for cards like one for one. Um, you know, you just kind of throw it out there into the graveyard and, you know, you always have that in the back of your, you know, your plays. And it's not a one-time thing, you know, if your opponent destroys it and then it comes back, um, and then they get destroyed again, you can always bring it back later, um, you know, because it'll always be in your graveyard unless it gets banished. So just a really good card. Always pay half your life points and you get a big beat stick. Uh, on top of the 5,000 attack, it has another effect that if it destroys your opponent's monster by battle, you get to destroy all their monsters your opponent controls, so just a really good card. Have to run one of. Moving on to new support, uh, Malefic Paradox Gear. Um, this is one of your very little no uh, normal summons. Uh, basically, if a field spell is on the field, you tribute this card and special summon a Malefic Parallel Gear from your deck. And then on top of that, you get to add a Malefic card from your deck to hand, um, which is very, very important. Uh, adding, a, you know, getting that resource of a big beat stick back to your hand um, just lets you get through your plays, gets to the beat sticks that you need to go over your opponent's board. Its other effect is that if you were to special summon a Malefic monster by banishing for its uh, summoning condition, you can use this card instead as fodder. So uh, this is pretty important because before you had to run nine extra deck cards specifically designated to summoning malefic monsters from your extra deck so that was kind of annoying uh this lets you circumvent that and cut the the amount to two each rather than three which gives you extra room for extra deck uh scenarios and you know situations play other cards so really good and then finally for the last normal summon quote unquote or special summon from deck is malefic parallel gear um so if you're going to synchro summon with this card you can use a Malefic Monster in your hand as the other Synchro Material instead. Uh, this is important as a clause because, as I said before, if you don't have the necessary support on the board to let you summon multiple Malefic Monsters, um, you have to be able to Synchro from your hand because you can't special summon the Malefic from your hand while this is on the field. So this circ this clause of text circumvents that and uh, lets you go into your rank, uh, your Synchro 10s and your Synchro 12s. Uh, moving on to more support, um, we're going to start with the most important card that basically it's Konami's band-aid to the deck, uh, Malefic Territory. Uh, this card fixes the deck, quote-unquote. Uh, it basically reworks the Malefic mechanics. So when this card is activated, you could add a Malefic World from your deck to your hand. Uh, I'm sorry, you could activate a Malefic World directly from your deck. Um, so it just slaps it on the board. Uh, Malefic World is kind of really bad so being able to just get it out for free is kind of great um and also your field spells can't be targeted um by card effects so that's really good for protection to keep them on board because you really need that field spell uh finally this is the meat and potatoes of the card effect malefics were only one malefic per uh on the field at a time this card rewrites the effect to say instead of one malefic can be on the board to there can only be one of each malefic monster so this means you can summon your Stardust, your Cyber End, your uh, Paradigm Dragon all at once, uh, have all those beat sticks on the board and attack for game. So it fixes that clause. The other clause that it fixes is the Malefics can only attack, um, only one Malefic can attack at a time. So it negates their effects uh, in, during the battle phase. This is important because not only can you attack with all your Malefics, but it kind of... Uh, lets you swing for game during scenario areas where you wouldn't be able to before if your opponent's interacting with you. It's just really helpful. Um, it is the bandy the deck always needed, and I'm glad that it, they finally realized that. Uh, three copies of Malefic World. This card sucks. It really does. Uh, but you need it to run the deck. Um, it just lets you, during your draw phase, pick three Malefic cards from your deck and uh, get one randomly to your hand instead of conducting your normal draw phase can be good but really if you're not winning turn one then well turn two you know going second you're not playing the deck right or you lost uh this is a very interesting piece of support uh malefic sector this card is actually pretty crazy um so you can banish two malefic cards from your graveyard and add two malefic cards from your deck to your hand uh except for malefic sector 
uh, as long as they're different names from the ones that were banished. So this card is really interesting because not only is it a plus, uh, plus one in terms of advantage, but you can get really cheeky with this. Say your opponent is, you know, they have a couple of disruptions on board and you start summoning your malefics and, you know, uh, activating your malefic world cards and such. If your opponent starts dealing with them and they go to the graveyard, this is essentially a reload to get exactly what you need, provided you don't get the same cards or, you know, any key cards hit. Um, more importantly, uh, this card can fix brick, like really bricky hands. So if you have malefics in your hand and you don't have the field spell, you could special summon those malefics. Uh, so you special summon Stardust, there's no field spell, it destroys itself. And then when it destroys itself, you summon another one from your hand. Say you have a Cyber End Dragon, you can special summon that one. It destroys itself because there's no field spell. Now you have two malefics in the graveyard, which means that you can banish those two to search Malefic Territory, Malefic World, a different Malefic Dragon uh, from your deck. You have the ability to fix those bricky hands without a field spell just by sacrificing your own monsters. Uh, sometimes your opponent won't see it coming. They'll think that you're acting dumb, or maybe they'll try to pop it or something. Like, you know, they'll, they'll think that you're just throwing away resources, but really, in fact, you're not. So you can use it as bait. Like, you have to get really creative with this card to maximize its potential, but I think it's super good because it essentially searches for almost anything in the deck. Uh, I really like this card. I think it's fantastic. Uh, now for some consistency pieces. A copy of One for One. Um, the gear is a level one, so obviously it's your best one for one target. Uh, discard Paradox. Um, Truth Dragon. Get that. You know, just get the resources you need. Terraforming. We want to see the field spell as much as possible, despite how bad it is. But you need a field spell to keep your monsters on board. Uh, three copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, draw power is essential. Uh, I see a lot of people running a Lore of Darkness. I don't like a Lore after playtesting because, yes, you can cycle to see your spells faster, but I'd much rather get the extra card instead of just trading cards because you really don't want to banish any of your main deck monsters. Like, you need those beaters in hand. So rather than just getting rid of resources and changing them out, um... I'd rather just get the extra plus one, and a lot of times you're swinging for game, uh, you know, what does it matter if you banish half of your deck or whatever, you just want to get that card so you can make plays and continue and press forward. Uh, a copy of Mystic Mine, um, I don't like this card one bit, but it's super handy. Not only is it a field spell that allows you to special summon your Malefics, but your Malefics are 4,000 attack for the most part, you know, most of your monsters are 4,000 attack. Your opponent's not getting over it without card effects most of the time. So by slamming this down on the board and then special summoning one of your Malefics from the hand, you essentially create a trade, you know, start trading into your opponent's big monsters uh, if they don't negate this. And you can just hold off the game as long as you can. Maybe don't even summon a Malefic until you get your proper pieces to push for game at any point of the turn. So... Uh, you know, you just put this down, you wait, you wait, and then you go and just swing for game with all the Malefic cards you have in hand. So, um, I feel it's a necessary evil. Uh, now for some going second, obviously three copies of Lightning Storm. Uh, you want to blow out your opponent. You want to destroy as much as you can with, uh, you know, trade advantage as best as you can. This card is just nuts. Destroys all the back row, destroys all the monsters. Um, I know... You People can play around it, but again, even if they do play around this somewhat by putting their monsters in defense mode, your Malefics are 4,000 attack. They're not going to have 4,000 defense. Just beat the crap over them. And, you know, most combo decks, if they don't have the resources to come back, you kind of won from there. So, really important to play that. And now uh, for traps, uh, three impermanence. You can't just blindly go second without any form of interruption. You need to find ways to play through your opponent's board, so impermanence is really good. Uh, go first, go second, doesn't really matter. It's just a great card. Uh, one copy of Malefic Tune. Um, this card is okay. It's not the greatest, but it can be sent to the graveyard for the gears uh, for Paradigm's effect. So you can get use this graveyard effect to essentially Rota for any Malefic monster. So basically what it does is if it's face down, if you set this card uh, and a Malefic monster is destroyed by a battle or a card effect, you pot agree. You draw two cards. And then the second effect is if it's in your graveyard uh, and a Malefic monster is destroyed, you can banish this card from your graveyard and search for any Malefic card. Um, uh, Malefic monster. So it's just a really good effect. 
um, you know, it's a good one of you just want to have it to get some get your resource game in case you have to go into turn three, four, or whatever. And then finally, the OG tech card for any Malefic deck, one copy of Skill Drain. Um, you know, this is a pseudo win condition, and your Malefics would be happy to see it because you negate all their effects. They you no longer have to control one. You can uh, attack with all your monsters. Uh, and, you know, any stipulations they won't be destroyed because of no uh, field spell, so on and so forth. So fantastic card. Wish it was at three like the OCG. All right, onwards to the extra deck. It's pretty bare bones when it comes to like creativity, but two copies of Stardust Dragon, need to banish it to summon Malefic. Two copies of Cyber End Dragon, banish to summon Cyber End. Two copies of Paradox Dragon. Uh, Paradox Dragon requires a field spell to also uh, stay on the field. Uh, it has a very interesting effect where when this card is synchro summoned, you can select a synchro monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. Uh, that used to, it used to be like really garbage back in the day, but now with all the synchro combos and whatnot, this could actually be useful. Uh, definitely summon this, take in the, what is it, um, the Herald of Arclight or whatever it's called. You can special summon that, you have a negate now. So uh, it's a pretty good card now with people running synchro monsters once more. So that's your main target for Paradigm Dragon. Um, a, uh, forgive me, I can never pr pronounce this guy's name, Draco Toys, whatever, uh, another Soul Dragon, uh, just a big beat stick, it can attack twice, 4,000 attack, uh, he can't be destroyed by battle, um, and if it destroys the opponent's battle by, um, uh, destroys the opponent's, opponent's monster by battle, uh, and sends it to the graveyard, this card can attack again, so that's how it attacks twice, pretty good. Uh, rank, uh, level 12. Uh, Mathmex Final Sigma. Um, this is the only level 12 <laughs> worth summoning for when it comes to synchros. It's nothing special. It's a 3k beat stick that's unaffected by other uh, card effects while in the extra monster zone. So at least it gives you a sort of wall in case you have to go first or if you need a guaranteed body to break over something. Uh, it's a really good one to go into. Um, your alternate win condition is... I'm just going to show them together. Uh, Rail Cannon, Gustav Max, and Juggernaut Libby. Um, this is to hit for game by 2000 if you, the attack damage from the Malefics didn't do it. Or if you really need a big, big monster or swing over everything, uh, you just go into Rail Cannon ju Juggernaut. Um, detach material, gains 2000 attack, and then you just swing into everything. It, it could attack up to the amount of materials on this card, plus one. So if it has two materials, well, if you have three, you detach one, it's... 2 plus 1, so 3 attacks for 6k. It just it just swings hard. Uh, now for some like situationally good cards. Uh, Galaxy has Fault on Lord. Just a monster negate. Uh, quick play. Uh, Sky Prison. Uh, acts like a Abyss Dweller. Um, except, you know, just prevents special summoning from the graveyard. But if you're forced to go first and you play against a heavy combo deck, this might, you know, hinder them. So definitely something to consider going into. Uh, Hope Harbinger, just um, negate spells, something good to go first with, and redirect attacks. Uh, Zombie Sign, big beat stick, and also uh, pseudo negate, so uh, really just quite useful. And then finally, Dengirsu, uh, really good, honestly. I put this in last minute because uh, Dragon's going to be all over the place. So if you were to play this at your locals and everybody's running Dragon, this card stops it. Uh, Non-targeting, sent to graveyard, so Dragoon has nothing to worry about. Uh, he can still negate the effect, but if they were to use the negates, this is a way to deal with it. So I think this is kind of mandatory to run as a rank 8. Just fantastic. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the deck profile. Uh, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, if you have any feedback, please leave it down below in the comments. Have a good one.